Hey y'all, four o'clock central time, and uh, you're at Rose Street Blown Glass Studio and Gallery, and we are on our Facebook Live broadcast. Uh, we're going to start here at our little uh, uh, sale table, and just some things you might want to think about for Mother's Day, or for any day really. Mother's Day is May 9th, um, so we have... Um, a dreamscape face, a teardrop. Teardrop, thank you. Teardrop base and a shoulder base. The, 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 the dreamscape and the teardrop are two fifty a piece, and the shoulder base is four forty. Um, we have some wine goblets, a uh, new set out here. These are forty nine dollars each. Somebody's really trying to get yes. to me, huh? <laughs> uh, we have these. Uh, um, my brain is just dead. These are dizzy... Bevy. Bevy glasses. Okay. Um, I don't know what those are. These are the 84 pair, I think. I think so. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I don't know why things don't get, don't get marked. It's all right. Tumblers, $43 each. If you want that, ba if you want that base, make me an offer. <laughs> Hummingbird feeders, $38. Heart bowls are $98 a piece. So. Also, the top of the vase is a heart. Yes. All right. First, let me tell you, it's hot, y'all. <laughs> uh, summer has hit the glass blowing studio. Uh, the the uh, feels like temps. I don't know. Let's let's get the magic. Ooh, I love when we do this. <laughs> magic. There you go. At my bench, it's ninety-five. In front of the, down the floor, in front of the reading chamber, 104. 104 at the Marver. So it's 100 ish or so down here. Just so you kind of know what we're, what we're going through. Anyway, hey y'all, I'm Mark. I'm the owner here at Rose Tree along with my wife Brenda. And we come to you from beautiful downtown, historic Algiers Point, New Orleans, Louisiana. And, um, Today what we're going to make is, I have an order for a um, one of these uh, olive oil dispensers and uh, go really nicely on your, on your table, just fill it up and pour it out. This is the um, paperweight I did last Thursday, I guess mm -hmm. it was, because we, were, uh, in, or we, we weren't able to do anything on Tuesday. So you see the flower image on top. And then you see the green, whatever that's called, on the bottom. <laughs> little bud thing. And just so you know what that looks like in real life. Anyway, um, today we're in New Orleans. We're doing what we're calling Best Thing in Place. Uh, Jazz Fest was supposed to be last weekend, this weekend. So that's the t-shirt for today. Usually it's a rose tree t-shirt. Special occasion, we have a... Uh, Jazz Fest t-shirt. This t-shirt was from when the first year after Katrina and the, the um, thrust of it is the healing power of music and I think uh, we can probably use that again. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Um, and if all, if any of y'all uh, gone to Jazz Fest or think about going to Jazz Fest, you tune into WWOC which is 90.7 um, down here, I guess you do it online, wherever you all are, and they're doing uh, from 11 to 7 uh, through Sunday. They're doing uh, concerts, clips from Jazz Fest past, and it kind of gives you an idea of what's happening. It's really, it's really cool. Okay, so today's piece will be two layers. Uh, first layer will be green powder. Second layer will be double blue and white chips. Uh, we'll stuff in the optic mold, we'll swing a little bit, yeah. and uh, get it done. <laughs> All right. uh, hydrate is very important today. I've gone through two of these already. I'm on my third. So we got we got a little bit of a roll call to take to, today. Okay. So uh, we got lots of hellos. We got Doc Rich, Barry, Jennifer Fowler, Shatney's here. Tracy's here. Um, we've got Annette Hoban Frawley said, love your place. I bought two oil burning lamps there. Great, thank you. 
And then Barry decided to show off and say that it was 69 degrees there. <laughs> and that I, I should probably need my ice pack already. That's not beach weather down here. <laughs> Doc said he's in place with Rose Tree. Wonderful. Barry said that the um, uh, um, paperweight came out beautiful and it's a pistol and stamen. Pistol and stamen is on the inside, not the thing on the bottom. I looked it up today <laughs> online. I looked up parts of a flower, and it is it, it, it's something, and I've never heard the term before, but it, and it went out of my brain. <laughs> so anyway, um, and let me tell you, if you're new here, uh, please just um, watch. You can't participate. Just put in the comment section. Um, you know, give us a hello, and then you're new, and um, follow along. And uh, you know, it's just like coming in here and just chit-chatting with us and hi <laughs> <laughs> and, and coming up to the gate and saying hello and uh so that's really what we what we do and uh, i forgot to introduce darcy is the voice behind the camera so if you have any questions that you need answered put them in your comment section and darcy will really relay those to me and hopefully i can answer them except for the part of the flower thing so <laughs> and i'm putting that back on y'all because i know somebody is there googling parts of the flower i know tracy gave it last time but I don't think that was correct. But I'm not going to doubt anything right now. All right, let's go get some flowers. Oh, Jimmy Smith has said hello from Eagles Jimmy Nest. Smith is on? Yeah, hello wow. from Eagle Smith, or Eagle Smith, he's, Eagles he's, Nest, New Mexico. He's fly fishing in New Mexico with, with a few other of my friends. Yeah. Um, God, it's got to be cold. <laughs> there was snow last night, I think, or the night before. Uh. Like, you know, Jimmy hot here. You should uh, take all the cold you can with you. All right, this is my furnace. Inside my furnace is a uh, it's called crucible, which is a, a glass bowl, a, glass, a ceramic bowl that holds the glass. It's 2,050 degrees inside, and that's what keeps the glass molten. That's what keeps the glass a liquid. That's how we can shape the glass when it's so hot that it flows like a liquid. Um, this is a glow pipe. Low pipes the same kind of tools. Glass blowers have been using for over 2,000 years. And of course, they didn't have stainless and rubber and plastic, but the same methodologies. Uh, the tip of the glow pipe has to be heated up with glass and stick to it. And so that's what we're going to start with. And yeah. Get the end of the pipe in. Keep turning, turning, turning. Called a gather, so you're gathering the glass on the end. If I stop turning, you'll see that the glass will flow kind of like honey. And we'll come back over to my place. Shatney said the pumpkins are gorgeous and can't wait to present them as gifts. Thank you. And Jimmy said they got snow yesterday. No, no, you can't have me. I, I wouldn't be standing in a river with no around. Uh, I, I have to draw the line somewhere. I would love to go just for the scenery, but not to stand in a stand in a, in a almost frozen river. Love you, Jimmy, but not only <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be we're going to put two layers of the green on, and in between each layer, I'm putting it in the reheating chamber. The reheating chamber is about 2,100 degrees, and it's only hot. It doesn't have any glass in it, so it's just used to reheat the glass. Some people have, they don't have a reheating chamber, they just reheat out of their furnace. But I find that uh, very iffy because with the door open to reheat, the glass cools off on the inside. But also, isn't it risky? Like, if you could, drops, yeah, you could ruin the whole thing. You have to fish it out until it drops in there. Ugh. So Jennifer Fowler, Fowler asked, why do you get it wet before you gather? It's a good question, and I, I, I ask that question also. It's almost like a superstition. Lots of glass blowers do it. It's to, um, from what I understand, to keep bubbles off the end of the pipe. In one sec, I'm going to blow into the glass, into the pipe, trap the air inside. It's called an air trap. And I'm looking at the outside of the glass. And when I see it start to poke out in the middle, that tells me that my bubble is inside. So you see it start to poke out right about here. So the bubble's in there, and we're gonna work off of that bubble, build on that bubble uh, for the rest of the piece. So anyway, 
from what I understand, when you dip the glass in the water, something to do with temperatures or I don't know, but I tend not to get bubbles on the end of the pipe, which are hard to blow through and it makes things funky. So that's why I do it, because it works. All right. Aaron made it, said, hey, sorry, I'm late. Welcome, Aaron. Shatney was asking, what's the most difficult piece you've made? Um, the most difficult piece is probably a piece I did a collaboration with uh, Greg Chase, who was a very fine uh, Millefiori maker. Uh, and this little pictures in the glass, and he would make marbles and things like that. Um, and we did a piece, actually, yeah, it's up in the gallery. Um, if you remind me, um, we'll put up a, pe a picture of it. It's just the... a piece of a, it's a, a Louisiana, there's a New Orleans scene down in a big, like big coin on the bottom, and then ghosts and skulls and musical notes and all spiraling up into the piece. So that's probably the most complex piece that I've made. All right, so the glass is cooled off enough to get my next layer, so I'm going to go get another layer on top. Jimmy said he's listening to WWOZ and watching Rose Tree, and it's about as good as it gets. There you go. That's what everybody should be doing. <laughs> and I think Barry's right, so I'm going to step over and get my first ice pack. interesting question I hadn't heard before. Do you worry about the oils on your hands creating issues when you touch the crushed glass? So. Uh, no. Um, there, there are certain things that you have to wipe down uh, for the oils on your hands, like uh, using canes or pickups and things like that that are larger. to elongate it and like push it together. Um, so those things we do, I do clean before uh, heating them up and picking them up. But things like the chips, you wouldn't notice it just because they're so small. I'm going to smooth that out a little bit more. Right next to the pipe, the 
the two bubbles right here. And I'm going to go a little bit more. And then I'm going to, I'm going to work the net now. I'm going to shake the net. Because this piece isn't transferred. So I can't work on the neck later. I'm going to work on the neck now and take measurements on it because it has to be a very specific measurement for the uh, top to fit on. There are some people who make these dispensers and soap dishes that um, just use corks. And I don't really like the cork look. So ours is a, a screw-on tread that uh, we glue on and just gives it, I think, a nicer, nicer look. Ooh, got a little close on that one. That was kind of cool. <laughs> so I don't hear you say ouch, we're good. <laughs> so I'm going to heat that up again and stretch out the neck a little bit more because I know it's a little too fat right now. Calipers can give me an inside measurement, which is there, and an outside measurement, which is there. So, I'm going to pick up one more time. And stretching out a little bit. Here. Looks like Christy may be missing a, a swing heavy day. Jennifer said, turning to fight gravity. Or using gravity force. As, your, uh, as your friend there. Gravity is my friend. Hopefully. <laughs> and when it's not, we, we fight. Don't flat the bottom. <laughs> what? And Jennifer said, are we really going there with the, uh, the other swingers? That's my guess. I assume it's about the other swingers. I don't know. Y'all have this. <laughs> Alright, so I'm giving it a good uh, flash all the way in. I'm going to come out and swing it a tiny bit and straighten out the side. Yep, it was about the swingers. <laughs> Grab it. So I'm putting a kick in the bottom, which is just that indentation so that it sits level on the table. Let's straighten that out one more time. We're moving really fast on this one. I can't. <laughs> 
<laughs> like I can't go in too fast or getting my exercise though. Are out for the out and, oops, and the top can just be screwed on. So, Jennifer is asking Does the ambient temperature of the studio affect the way you work the glass? It affects the way I work for sure. <laughs> um, does the glass cool off quicker in the winter time kind of thing? Is that, is that what's happening? Yeah. Not if there's a wind blowing on it, that's probably more of a, a uh, hindrance. Um, but if we have, you know, 10 degrees or 20 degrees, it doesn't really make that big a difference. So having a super hot day doesn't give you a little extra room for working before going time. back? No, not really. I mean, you think about it. I'm working in something that's over 2,000 degrees. An extra 20 degrees is... If is it were 2,000 degrees in here, I quit. I, I <laughs> um, so anyway, that's an annealing oven that was put in. An annealing oven is 950 degrees, 940 degrees. And uh, what happens is the piece, when it goes in, it's different temperatures across the whole piece. And what happens is there, it'll stabilize at 940, and then... And I put on a turn down for the night in 14 hours or so, it's down to room temperature uh, without having any um, any cracks from from thermal shock going from hot to cold too fast. So if you took it, if I just left it out here, um, it would go from 1200 or whatever, whenever I put it, or 1100 when I put it away, to room temperature in about a half hour, and that's very, just too fast, and it'll, it'll crack. So Shatney said he loves the new sign. Oh, that one? Okay, thank you. <laughs> and Corey said, dang, I'm super late. Corey, you're going to have to get, have a note next time. <laughs> Give him detention. In, in detention. <laughs> See, Corey, Corey wants to have detention because he wants to come down here and be in detention. Corey, you get detention. Okay, so this is back <laughs> um, to our display one more time. Mother's Day, May 9th, which is a week from Sunday. A week yeah. from Sunday, y'all. So if you want something for Mother's Day, you got to get on it. Um, we have some larger bases, uh, Teardrop, Dreamscape. Each of those is $250 piece. Shoulder base in the back is our signature piece. That's $440. Wine goblets, $49 each. Uh, bevy glasses are $84 for the pair. Uh, we have tumblers at $43. Hummingbird feeder, $38. Um, the heart top. Uh, base, I don't know. <laughs> and then uh, the heart bowls are 98. And also, if y'all are on our mailing list, um, you should have gotten a uh, best thing in place uh, email with some uh, discounts on it. So if you're not on our mailing list, you need to be. And hopefully, you will uh, find those uh, something that you can use and enjoy. Alrighty, we'll step back over here. My name is a little cross right here. Yes, it was um, nice. Corey says deal, by the way. With the tension? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, so anyway, uh, today is Thursday. It's the, uh, the close to the end of the week for us. And I thank you all for coming and joining us down here. Um, as always, uh, support your local businesses, galleries, restaurants. Uh, if y'all are, if music is starting in your area, go out and support your music, musicians. 
uh, the small business owners and gig workers are the ones that really could use your help. Uh, Amazon and people like that, they're gonna, they're gonna survive. So uh, help out those who need your help. Uh, if you need glass of us, uh, you go to www.rosetreegallery.com on the web. Facebook, Rose Tree Blown Glass, but you know that because you're here. Uh, Instagram, Rose Tree Gat Glass Gallery. YouTube, all of these are on YouTube. So if you miss a day or want to look, you have nothing better to do with your life. Now, uh, if you want to look up some glass, our YouTube channel is Rose Tree Blown Glass Studio and Gallery. All right. Um, have a great weekend, y'all. It's supposed to rain here, which is okay. My cool things off. Um, as always, be kind to one another, love one another. Thank you for coming. We'll see y'all next Tuesday. Take care.